You know, one of the most interesting aspects of humanity is the muscle. Why are muscles so important? I mean, it's obvious, but what makes a muscle so unusual in the overall scheme of things? Without muscle, there's no movement. In other words, bones can't do it, tendons can't do it, ligaments can't do it, organs can't do it, but there's something spectacularly interesting about muscles and what they're able to do in conjunction with one another. One can contract and one can let go. It's this contraction, letting go, opening, closing, that really represents organic life, doesn't it? We've all seen pictures of the various organisms, whether it's like a, a one-celled amoeba or a particular type of, type of plant or something that if you touch it, it seizes up. I don't know, a Venus flytrap comes to mind, but it will grab when it's stimulated or triggered, and then it will let go. Now, Venus flytraps and, organ and uh, one-celled amoebas are smarter than humans because they'll grab and they'll let go. Humans are interesting because they'll grab, but they'll never let go. <laughs> they'll, they won't let go. Now, imagine an organism that through trauma or dysfunction or poor nurturing or you know, you come up with a thousand reasons, that's irrelevant, but has contracted so many times that it simply won't let itself go. It's always a fist. Now, how receptive is a fist? One of the great keys to prayer is being able to receive a prayer. Now, we've been praying a lot. Everybody prays a lot. And so, are only a couple of prayers answered and the rest are kind of thrown into the cosmic uh, dust heap by God. And it's like, nah, you know, that's enough praying. I'll, I bet I answered one and they all No, every single prayer is answered. It's just the question is, to what degree is any prayer in the condition of being ready to be answered? And if we're constantly in this grip, this contraction, this fist, this physiological, mental, spiritual, emotional fist, there's not much ability to receive. And when you think about it in those terms, then it becomes sort of a visceral quality of what it is that's needed to receive the all the prayers that have been asked that are all lined up, ready to be answered, but only when we're in a receiving mode. Now, this is the beautiful thing um, so many prayers talk about we're led behind, uh, beside the uh, still waters. We're made to lie down in green pastures. What does this represent? It represents our soul, our physiology, our consciousness relaxing open. And the beautiful thing is, is that's what these prayers do. And sometimes we get so freaked out, so worried have you ever not been able to come up with a prayer? It's like, what do I pray? Or I'm out of prayers. Or um, there's such a such a world library of great prayers from every religion and every spiritual tradition that we can use when we're too contracted, when we're too stuck. So we don't have to depend upon our own intellect to come up with just the right prayer at just the right time. We can always simply open a book, and there are many of them that have fabulous prayers. And so, you know, that famous 25th Psalm from the Old Testament, uh, he maketh me to lie down in green pastures and he leadeth me behind, beside the still waters. What is that prayer doing? It's getting us to calm down, to come into a condition, a condition of receptivity where we're able to receive the states of consciousness within us, our minds are able to change. When our minds change, our circumstances can then change. A mind that won't change cannot experience a change of circumstances. And this is the great paradox that most of humanity 
still has not learned. They want outside conditions to change without a change of consciousness. And it it's so absurd that it might be even construed as being insane. I want the outside world to change. I want the problematic circumstance, issue, concern to change for the better without a change of my mind. And that's a mind that is contracted and is stuck. So consider prayers of calm and peace, the serenity prayer. You can find them. You know that there are many of them. If you don't know a single prayer, the 25th Psalm, just pray that prayer. There's so many. There's so many. He leadeth me beside the still waters. And let that work on our consciousness. And the great thing that prayer does is that it changes our consciousness. Then conditions, it's not maybe that they'll change or we hope that they will. They will. And then everything we've been praying for will come in generally in ways better than we could ever think of. I hope you find it helpful. Have a good day, everybody.